Hearts. Welcome to the Seafarer's Devotion, Waves of Hope, 17 September. Today we're going to be in Psalms chapter 119. I'll give you a few moments to uh, get your Bibles ready. I'll be reading out of the NIV. But as you're getting your Bibles ready, I just want to say hello around the world to crew members and the crew members that are beginning to come back to Port Canaveral. This last weekend, we had the first crew members were able to get off the ship and what a blessing it was to see them and the interaction and it's going to grow back to where we were, but also so good to have the crew members able to get off the ship now. Only one of the ships right now, but it's going to get better. But to crew members around the world, volunteers, supporters, friends and family, welcome to this Waves of Hope on the 17th of September. Today, we're going to have a little bit of fellowship, some faith, some followership, some friendship, and most definitely some fun. A quick prayer as we get started. Father God, creator in heaven and earth, give us some wisdom, understanding, and clarification of your word so we can all grow together to serve you trust you and obey. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Folks, when I begin to read and study God's living word, every time I do, not only for waves of hope, but every time I get into the word, his testimony, his gift to us, the words come alive. And I I look for the message and I feel like he gives me the message. I've said this before and I think I'll say it till the end of my times. I study and read the Bible thinking about three things. I believe it all to be true. God's word is true from Genesis in the beginning to Revelations, amen, at the very end. I believe it all to be true. Secondly, what is God telling me in my walk with Jesus? How am I to apply his words, his wisdom, his knowledge in my walk? What's the personal application of his word for me. And thirdly, part of this whole thing with the waves of hope and this devotion every every Friday for us, how do I use his words for sharing and spreading the gospel to others? What's he telling me in those words that I can then apply with you or serve you or assist you? Something to think about. Folks, out of the book of Psalms, Chapter 119, we're going to read just verses 1 through 8. It's kind of short today, but hopefully we've got some interesting things to look at. Aleph, 1 through 8. In my Bible, it it starts out with Aleph, 1 through 8. And each of the uh, 119, Psalms 119 is broken down into all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So I looked up. Aleph is the first letter of the alphabet, which means truth. But that was interesting. So here we go. Verse 1, Psalms 119. I will read through it, all eight verses, and then I do have some commentary I'm going to read from Matthew Henry. Then I'll go back and do some of my own analysis. So, verse 1. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do no wrong, but follow his ways. Verse 4, you have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. Verse 5, oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. Then I would not be put to shame when I consider all your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will obey your decrees. Do not utterly forsake me. Interesting, kind of short. But I think it's going to be really interesting what we find in these few verses. I am using a commentary from Matthew Henry. He was a writer, a scholar, theologian back in the early 1700s. And he broke it down and I like some of the things he said. So I'm going to go over those. (coughs) Excuse me. In the first three uh, verses of 119, Here, Matthew Henry says, the psalmist here shows that godly people are happy people. They are and shall be blessed indeed. All men would be happy, but few take the right way. I thought that was very interesting. All men would be happy, should be happy, but few take the right way. So we have to navigate this path. 
this path. God has here laid before us the right way. And I put the right way is Jesus Christ. The right way is through Jesus Christ, which we may be sure will end in happiness, though it be straight and narrow. We're going to talk more about the straight and narrow later, but God has laid before us the right way. Makes me just automatically, I come to John 14, 6 and 7. Jesus answered Thomas, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Jesus says, hey, I am God on earth. We're the same, the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I am God standing before you. So if you're thinking about God, you're seeing him right now. And then the other thing that jumps out at me talks about the right way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, meaning Jesus was with God in the beginning. Through all the things were made, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Let me, let me read that again. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was light, was the light to all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That's John 1, verse 1 to 5. Matthew Henry goes on, and these are some questions and just some analysis. I'm going to read them and, and let you think about them, and, and I'll have a few comments about them. Who makes the will of God the rule of all of our action? Meaning who? Which one of you? and governs themselves in their whole life, their conversation by that rule. Who makes the will of God the rule? Who makes the, the word of God? Who makes his law? Remember, this is Old Testament, so they're gonna be talking about the, the word, they're gonna use the word the law, but nowadays, as Christians, we look at it as the word, because all of it is God's word, and Jesus was the word. So who makes the will of God the rule of all their actions? Do you? Can you? Should you? Well, yes. I hope the answer is yes to all three of those. But we need to let the word of God govern our lives. Matthew Henry goes on. They could be we, they who walk in the law of the Lord. Hmm. Walking in the law of the, walking in the way of the Lord, walking in the word of Jesus. That's so important for us to understand. By walking in the way of the law, walking with the law of the Lord, this is walking in God's way. He gave it to us. Not only did people hear him in the past that wrote it down, it's written down for us to read it. Walking in God's way, the ways which he has marked out, written out, has marked out to us and has appointed us to walk in. But we must make it the rule of our walk. We must walk in his ways, not in the way of the world or of our own heart. Well, I, heart in this instance means like the emotion. Well, I, I feel this or I feel that. No, we have to go back to the word and see what the word says. We, we don't need to walk in the way of the world or in our emotional state. We need to walk in the way of the word. So those who walk in the law of the Lord, the word of the Lord, this is walking in God's way is what Matthew Henry says. Then he goes on. Who is true to the trust given them as God's professing people? It was the honor of the Jews that to them were committed the word oracles, the word of God, and blessed are those who preserve pure and entire the sacred deposit, the sacred word. Do you keep it pure? Do you keep it sacred? I try to trust and obey in my daily walk. I don't always make it. I stumble many times but I try to keep it pure. I don't try to corrupt it. I don't try to bend his word to fit what Bill wants. I try to bend and change Bill to what God's word says. Matthew Henry goes on. They, or we, seek him with our whole heart. They do not seek themselves or their own things, but God only. This is that which they aim at, that God may be glorified in their obedience and that they may be happy in God's acceptance. Wow, we need to be 
happy that we can glorify God in our obedience and that we may be happy that God accepts us. Hallelujah. Then Matthew Henry, Henry asks, who carefully avoids all sin? Oh, I don't. I, I said it earlier. I stumble many times. Who avoids all sin? How about you? They do no inequity. They, you do no sin. We do not allow ourselves in any sin. We do not commit sin as those do who are the servants of sin. Okay, we, we don't have a sin nature once we're believers in Christ and we've been saved. But we still sin sometimes. But we're not servants of sin. That's the important part. Who carefully avoids all sin? Those that don't make sin part of their nature. We do not make a practice of it. Do not make a trade of sin. Don't deal in sin. Don't put yourself in those situations where you, you're going to be sinning. Avoid those situations. Matthew Henry goes on a little bit more analysis here in verses 4 to 6. To hold ourselves to the highest obligations to walk in God's law. Now this was, again, remember, this is back in Psalms during David's time. So we didn't have grace and love. But think about it. I'll read, read it again using the words grace and love. To hold ourselves to the highest obligation to walk in God's grace and love. The law was there to show us that we need grace and love from Jesus Christ. To look up to God for wisdom and grace. Wow, that's so powerful, folks. To look up to God for wisdom and grace because it doesn't come from us. It comes from him and his holy word. To encourage ourselves and others in the way of our duty. Hmm. Duty. Oh, trust and obedience. To encourage ourselves and others in the way of our trust and obedience. With assurance of the comfort we shall find in him. His word, his law, his commandments. Think about that. We encourage ourselves and others in the way, in the way to trust and obey God. So that we know... We find comfort in him, his word, his law, and his commandments. That's really powerful, ladies and gentlemen, if you think about it. Not only to encourage ourselves, but to encourage others. Let's go back up to the top a minute. I'm done with Matthew Henry. I like Matthew Henry. I think all of you, I would recommend this. All of you ought to find one or two good commentary sources out there that when you run into a little trouble or you have a question about something, you can go to somebody that devoted their life to the study and the scholarship of the Bible. And I don't put any more faith in the Matthew Henry or the other commentaries or the other scholars more than I do the Bible. Sometimes it helps me understand because I don't know enough. But I read somebody else's opinion, then I'll go back and look at the scripture and try to understand it. So back to verse 1 in chapter 119 of Psalms. Blessed are those who walk, whose ways are blameless, who walk according. That's where I want to focus right now. Walk according to the law of the land. Okay? That's what you have to think about. Walk according. So, Matthew Henry mentioned that the... Right? Let me get down here a minute. That when I when we first started talking about Matthew Henry, which we may be sure will end in happiness, though it be straight and narrow. Remember, the right way is the straight and narrow way. Well, what did Jesus have to say about this? Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to, not happiness, not good things, but destruction. Wide is the gate, broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, narrow the road that leads to life. And then he sums it up. And he says, only a few find it. Straight and narrow, folks. The tougher road to follow. Not what the world is doing. The straight and narrow. It also makes me think of Colossians 2.6. This is out of the ESV. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Then verse 2 and 3. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do no wrong, but follow his ways. What's the ways of Jesus? Here's a good one. 
Mark 12, verse 28 to 34. One of the teachers, we're talking about his ways. What are the ways of Jesus? What are the ways of God through Jesus? What did he give us? So Mark, again, Mark 12, 28 to 34. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, Jesus answered, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Verse 32, which I think this second part of this, we always, a lot of us know that, you know, but these follow on verses 32 to 34 really, I think, sum this up very well. Well, teacher, the man replied, you are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices because we are now fortunate to have received from 2,000 years ago the greatest sacrifices of all, the Lamb of God. Jesus was sacrificed for us. Excuse me. Verse 34. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to them, you are not far from the kingdom of God. You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then, no one dared ask him any more questions. That verse 34, not about not asking more questions. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Wow, I want to be in that position. I want to be close to the kingdom of God. You know, but that first part of mark 12 there where it says hear o israel the lord our god the lord is one that's from the shema that's the shema prayer and many many jewish people have the i, I forget the name of it but the, the marker on their doorpost most of them have that on there the shema and most jews following jews believing jews recite the shema many times numerous times throughout the day and the shema came out of Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 and 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Verse 6, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Remember we talked earlier about it, being on your heart. Well, now we have Jesus Christ placed it on our heart. He's the living word and the Holy Spirit lives within us right here. I just love that, how Jesus pops out of the Old Testament all the time. Verse 4 of Psalm 119, you have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. You have laid down precepts, uh, commandments, laws, direction, okay, precepts are that, the law. You have laid down uh, commandments for me or things I must do that are to be fully obeyed. Fully obeyed, not part-time, not part-time brings to mind John 14, 15 to 21. If you love me, keep my commands, period. I could stop right there. John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commands, period. Let's go have some coffee. We're done for the day. Let's read on. Verse 16. This is out of John 14. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, not part-time, not just till tomorrow, forever. The spirit of the spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live and you will also live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. Let's go back up here a minute in Psalm 119, verse 4. You have laid down precepts, laws, commandments that are to be fully obeyed. 
Back to John 14, verse 21. I'll read it again. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is, in the, one, is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Wow. We keep his commands. We trust and obey. He will show himself to us. Hallelujah. Let's sum this up. Verse 8 of Psalm 119. I will obey your decrees. Again, laws, commandments. I will obey your decrees. Do not utterly forsake me. Deuteronomy 31.6 comes to mind. This is also repeated. Part of this is repeated in Hebrews 13.5. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. This is the part that's repeated in Hebrews. He will never leave you nor forsake you. David's asking that God not forsake him. And then we're reminded that God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. What's the takeaway from Psalms 119 verse 1 to 8 as we get ready to wrap up here? It was short, but I think very powerful today. Walk with the word, Jesus, in your heart. Walk with the word, with your actions and your words to others. Let other people see what's in your heart, which is Jesus Christ. Don't just go through the motions. Live it and love it all. Because Jesus Christ gave us the gift of life through him. I leave you today with the Arionic blessing out of number 6, 22 to 27. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to serve you and to be with you every Friday till we meet again. God bless you.